Thank you. Welcome to the May 18th, 2022 uh, Board of Selectmen, Board of Health meeting located in um, the town offices here at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. This is a hybrid Zoom and municipal um, in-person meeting. This meeting will be held in the hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general um, laws, chapter 30A, section 20, Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting and hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person in attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details below. The dial-in number is 312-626-6799 or 929-205-6099. The meeting ID is 911-604-604. 1580. The passcode is 757, excuse me, 570012. Thank you. Um, so we are calling the meeting to order at 502. And the um, pursuant to general laws, chapter 30A, section 21A3, and subject to the chairman's declaration and a roll call vote, the select board may meet in executive session to discuss strategy with the respect to the collective bargaining with Massachusetts Coalition of Police, IUPA, AFL, uh, CIO Police, and US, UPS EU Highway, if an open meeting may be detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town. Would I would entertain a motion? I'll make a motion to go into executive session. And I will second that. It will be a roll call vote because we have uh, remote participation. So I, Carolyn Ness. I, Tim Hilchey. I, Trevor McDaniel. Okay, thank you. We will meet in executive session and we'll come back out in general session. Thank you. So welcome back to our um, Select Board Board of Health meeting, May 18th, 2022. We are uh, rejoining public session at um, 5.55. Um, we have, um, first, we're going to start with public comment. If there's anybody in the public that would like to make a comment or have anything to address the board, we'd love to hear that. I don't see anybody with their hands up online. And if nothing there, then um, we do have um, a few appearances tonight. We've, we've got um, Billy Chalfont from the Town Building Advisory Committee and and Lee uh, Wolfkuhl will be um, addressing a separate item. Um, we'll list, hear from Julie first. Hey, Julie, welcome. Hi, thanks. How are you? Okay, how are you guys? Good, doing good. So the Town Building Advisory Committee has been operating off of our original task list when we were first um, created at the end of 2018. Um, and we've done a lot of work and completed many of the tasks that were on our original assignment. So it was time to revisit that task list. Um, and I think you guys have a copy yes. of the new task list that we've proposed for us to work on. Um, one of the tasks we did not accomplish last time was to come back to you with a recommendation for whether to do a permanent board or individual committees. And we're, we haven't done that yet. So um, that has reappeared on this task list and we're really gonna do it this time around. Um, but other, in order for us to keep doing the work that um, we have been doing, we would like to renew the task list, um, which you have in front of you. 
Yeah, it looks good. You've got four items here to, to create a maintenance and repair plan for town buildings. Uh, number two is oversee building refurbishment projects. And uh, three is make recommendations for space needs in town buildings. And four is to assess opportunities for uh, a combined community senior center. Uh, for the select board task, the town building advisory committee with the responsibilities to prepare a report with recommendations for the select board, including whether to create a permanent building committee or indiv individual committees for individual product projects and a uh, draft scope of work for the um, permanent committee, if so recommended. So I would make a motion to approve this. This is a great list. And I, I just want to thank you, Julie, um, for chairing and and. Um, Chief and everybody who's been uh, a part of your committee have done great work, and uh, we really feel like we're we have momentum moving forward in town to really address our needs. I would I would second this because um I think this is excellent to move forward, um and I also would like to make just add one more thing to this, not as a as it maybe like a you know four a um, is we should really have um, a three town meeting with the, our if we vote this tonight mm -hmm. which positively, which I hope we do, um, that we would have a three town uh, select board meeting with our town advisory um, committee to discuss moving forward with the senior center. I agree. I definitely would totally uh, agree with that. We, we really need to focus on, on that building or, or a space. And we're going to have a presentation tomorrow, a little bit on the survey. And I know, um, Deerfield has put some money forward for continuing those studies. And I um, I believe Waitley and Sunderland also is looking to eye some money towards that as well. And But I do think it's important that we all get together. We're all on the same page, like we did with SCEMS. Do we want a building? Do we want it in Deerfield? Do we want to look at the other two towns? How does everybody want to move forward? Because we need Well, well we need involved. a decision fairly quickly so we can keep pressuring for money for mm -hmm. the senior center yep um you know our seniors are homeless they need to have a place and you know government is slow so we need yep. to keep pushing we yep. have an opportunity right now and um just like you said with scams that how we started was we just the select boards work together yeah and that's what we need to do so and we have new select board or we'll have new select board um members um in, in all three towns in all three towns so yep. it is important that we all all of us get together yeah. just to See touch what base feelings are. and introduce each other. Yeah. So um, if, if I, like I said, I would second this, I would highly recommend and thank Julie for putting this together and just add this immediate task. To that we would this. invite them to, a, to have them involved with that. Right. As we, as we have these, right. Some, these meetings. Sometime. Um, I believe Waitley's meeting is um, election is the 14th. Yeah of June. So anytime after that, after yeah. that June 14th date, we should try to get all three select boards together. Love that. Jim, do you have anything to add? Do you want to no. feel positive about it too? Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy that they're studying whether to create a permanent committee or individual committees. Mm -hmm. There are advantages to both. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we'll and, hear what and, they say. and doing the maintenance plan. I mean, that's one of the long term mm -hmm. things we set up for SCEMS mm -hmm. with the rent. And I think that's we just have to do this with all our buildings. We can't not do regular maintenance. Right. It's right. It's Lends up too much money in the end. Yeah. yeah. OK, so. Um, so I've added a statement here. Does that capture? Yeah. Uh, what you just said? Yes. Yeah, th that's perfect. Thank yep. you so much, Julie. Yeah, That's exactly you. right. That's I, I, I'm not trying to put you to additional work right away, but we really need to do it right away. So uh, yeah, with that motion to add, um, I'm good with that. You've seconded. Um, all those in favor? Any other discussion? No? All those in favor? Tim Milchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank you again, Julie. Really Thank appreciate you very the work. much, Julie. Look forward to working with you more. Um, our next... Uh, <laughs> the next appearance is Anna Lee Wolfcole from uh, she's the chair of our um, planning board and tackling all kinds of things. So how are you? Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, as you've seen in your packet, um, the town has received a letter uh, from the Department of Housing and Community Development, D 
CHD um, regarding um, Massachusetts Towns 40B Subsidized Housing Inventory, the SHI, lots of acronyms here. Um, the letter did go to the CB ZBA Planning Board, the mayor of the town and also the town administrator, um, st stating that in fact, that the state is, the Commonwealth is looking at validating all of the towns um, in the Commonwealth, um, their subsidized housing inventory. It is still based on the 2010 census. Um, the letter states that Deerfield subsidized housing inventory is attached, although it was not attached. <laughs> um, and there is a request for corrections and updates by June 4th, 2022. So that's right around the corner. Um, we've, there has been some preliminary investigation that has started. Um, I've taken some look, I think Jen and Casey have also at the 40B regs, I think they might be able to flesh this out a little bit more. There's a little bit of uncertainty as to what the real um, enforcement and the ramifications are for not meeting the 40B requirements that 10% of our um, housing inventory be deemed affordable. Um, so that certainly is, is one area of investigation that has begun, but has not found all the answers. Secondly, Jen has been working on uh, trying to determine what our subsidized housing inventory is, and she can speak to that in a minute. Um, she spoke very eloquently at our last planning board meeting, and it was <laughs> very illuminating to realize it's not just she will say, you know, making a phone call and saying, oh, okay, <laughs> what do you have down listed for us? It's, it's, it's rather um, challenging and she can, she can speak to that. My question for bringing it forward to the um, select board tonight is, again, it came to the ZBA, the planning board, I think, you know, to, to Casey and most likely you folks as the, um, as the mayors of the town, um, wondering who is in fact going to be taking the lead on following up with this. The planning board certainly does want to assist in any way we can, um, certainly both in responding to the letter and also, I mean, um, we have been looking at our overall housing inventory in Deerfield, realize that just it's hard for people, you know, in a wide variety of incomes to find housing in Deerfield. And so we, we want to be able to treat this letter seriously and also the the opportunity to try to help with housing inventory um, increasing having housing inventory in in general but we you know we want to assist as much as we can in terms of response to this particular um, letter and how we how we move forward so our main question is what can we do to help and or you know who's who's sort of taking the charge for responding i, I think we would probably respond as mm -hmm. a select board but also, I mean, I want to be clear in our response that we are, have been actively for more than a, more than a year, Lily, right? Um, 20 years. Yeah, 20 years, more than 20 years. Um, we have actively been trying to get subsidized senior housing and we're moving forward. You know, the town has committed money and we're moving forward with the planning process. Yep. So go ahead, Lily. Thank you. Um, I just want to make it clear that we can be denied our funding for subsidized senior housing if we do not show that we are actively pursuing subsidized housing for more than just seniors. And especially that the um, Elm Circle um, properties are coming up to the end of their um, Certification. They have eight more years, right? Right, but that's considered, you know, coming up to the end. Uh, and maybe Jen can speak to this, but I just really wanted to make it clear that our opportunity to have subsidized senior housing is threatened by our lack of subsidized housing, generally speaking. So I just wanted to put that in everybody's mind. And Thank I'll put you. This in everybody's mind. You can't build affordable housing. Like, show me a place that it's okay. affordable to build yeah. like land is really expensive products building products alone have gone up 50 percent just in the last year like I, I don't even know how you how you even attain 10 percent. i don't even know how you attain one affordable housing it, it's, i don't know how you can i mean I, I think we need 
housing. Like I, I watched a great YouTube video the other day on how much housing answers all the questions and all the issues that we have. Homelessness, you know, all kinds of different ailments that affect society, housing solves and we need it. Um, but we have, you look at all of our available land, it's all in APR. Like, I mean, where would you put you know, there's very few areas. I mean, there's a couple of spots here and there. I know, Lily, I'll get to you. You've got a hand up, but Braeburn, you can't get into. We're taking a ball field to put a put a, a spot there. I mean, there's really not a lot. You can put a couple around town in a, in a few different spots, but there's not a track of land to build a, to build any affordable housing on. I mean, it's just not available in this town, um, and because of our zoning for 50 years has made it that way. So. I think we have a lot of work to do. I'm happy to do it because I love to see housing being built. Um, it, it saw, like I said, it solves a lot of issues, but it's not affordable. Anyway, you stretch, unless you're getting government subsidy because it is a fortune, the codes to build, the requirements that are needed now, the energy efficiency requirements, all the building codes, and this is the industry I work in, it is exorbitantly expensive to build a home regardless of who's living in it or how they're going to pay for it. I don't even know how younger people are ever going to build a home to live in unless we build much smaller, you know, uh, tiny homes, 700, 800 square foot homes. And that would be something I'm in favor of. I just anything to, to make this somewhat affordable. All right, I'm off my soapbox. Lily. <laughs> um, I just wanted to point out that the town has over the town has over 300 acres yeah right now that we everywhere though it, it is everywhere but you can build subsidized housing yeah. anywhere right because it's a different need especially if we're not looking at specifically needs for older citizens so um i'm thinking beyond like senior housing senior housing really needs to be in our the heartbeat of the community but i just wanted to point that out that um, and so somebody, <laughs> another committee maybe could be pursuing, um, the, you know, understanding of the land that the town owns yeah. to be converted potentially into subsidized housing, do land swaps maybe with existing landowners and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I mean, to get creative anyway, that was just, a, I just wanted to remind I, I everybody that that does exist. I just want to say, I don't mind being creative. I agree that there is, it's very expensive for housing, but the Commonwealth does not support education. And right. I do not want to come across, I am not anti-kids, but our budget is almost 70% school related. And when you add in the benefits, and I'm really sorry, but we are not sustainable already. So when you have subsidized housing, you are talking about having younger families. I'm sorry, because it's income eligible. And, you know, we, we, need, we, we, just need, a we way need the government them. to understand that they're not supporting how we educate our kids and how we pay for schools. So I don't mind writing a letter. We also need to actively pursue, I think, writing a letter saying that we are actively pursuing and try to reach out to the Elm Circle owners to make sure that we are continuing that subsidy for you know in eight years we can do that i don't mind spending a little bit of money with our lawyers to work work on that but i'm i don't want us to invest a lot of time into subsidized housing because if you think that we can't even get a park built let me tell you in in your own backyard subsidized housing is not going to happen so, when I was, um, Lily, I would love to sit with you for, for a couple of minutes and look at those maps with you, like to, to really kind of weed out, you know, what's forest, what is like, what's available. Are there yeah. five lots somewhere that, that we could make it affordable for? I mean, we did, when I first came on, we unloaded a few, and there was a spot on Stillwater. There was a couple other lots that the town owned for one reason or another, and we tried to make them more affordable and people purchased and, they, and put and some houses put a, on and a, put a affordable put their, house on there. Yeah. But affordable is but like 350,000. Yeah. Know? But 
a subsidized is different than right. affordable. The affordable is market value, and you know market value is very high. It's tough here. It's yes. tough everywhere. I will share that links if anybody wants to see it on the housing thing. Um, Annalie and then Jen. Oh, okay. I'll be quick. Um, I, I was interested in a seminar that I um, a, uh, attended recently that talked about economic development and how much developers do like mixed use development in mm -hmm. town centers. And so that certainly is an opportunity. And I think Trevor, as you're talking about, you know, different size homes and, and, and whatnot, it seems like this is um, a pretty, uh, up, you know, it's a, a pressing issue for many as Jen will assess, uh, attest to because a lot of the towns are not where they need to be. So right. again, however, the the planning board can um, support, and even in the letter that you respond to, that the planning board is interested, you know, is actively looking at zoning for da 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 da. da, right. da. We, you know, please let us be part of that. Get together and write that. Yeah, that yeah. would be helpful. But downtown mixed housing is you that have would be affordable. Good. To me, you have affordable housing if it's downtown. And you have mixed. I mean, that's that's how you have a vital downtown. Right. So I I am a hundred percent supportive of that. Yeah. And that's that's a different whole different thing than taking prime farmland. I know you are worried about APR, but we still have to feed people. Oh, I agree. I agree with that. But food not, security is a huge issue. Yeah, but and you have to you have a still need to a home to food. eat it. I know, but so it, it's a long. I know it's a fight. Endless I know it's fight. a struggle. It's a back and forth. But yeah. So we'll, we won't solve it tonight, but thank you for bringing it up. We, um, I would love to, you know, yeah, talk and, with and you I would, work together on it. Jen's, Jen had some good, has, yeah. has probably some updates too. Yep, Jen, you still got your hand up? You... Sure. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, there's other types of affordable housing. I mean, like Habitat for Humanity. There's, there's other ways in order to get our numbers up and, um, you know, Elm Circle has 24 units. We have 10 with the Franklin County Regional Housing Authority. We have one from Amherst. Um, I called a couple of the, uh, you know, several of the other communities around housing authorities because anybody can get a Section 8 voucher from there. So then I said, well, let me call the state and see if they can give me some sort of inventory that they have instead of me calling each individual. Uh, housing authority to see if somebody has taken out a voucher in their town for Deerfield. And the, the gentleman I spoke with said that he had to get me in touch with an IT department and um, they haven't done that quite yet. So I could figure out because not only are there, there's the HUD vouchers, there's a section eight um, vouchers. There's, there's several different types that we can actually get our numbers from. However, we have a huge, gap between 30 and 300 right to make the 10 percent yep. so um i do agree with what annalee was saying about the mixed uses today i was sort of brainstorming with her about we're, we're looking at the supplemental you know units or um you know some how we can change the bylaw somehow i'm not sure I'm not a planner but um to to put some sort of condition in there that if they have over so many that they make a percentage of them affordable. Um, you know, just just try to, to, to brainstorm different ways to give people incentives to um, maybe, you know, having more um, subsidized apartments for people that are affordable. Right. Um, but anyways, I, I mean, I'm working on the list and it's just not uh, huge. Right. And I'm I'm really not anti kid. It's just I worry about balancing the budget. <laughs> it's tough. It's you want I mean to we have huge problems. No. Good. I mean, tiny homes are great, but <laughs> <laughs> tiny They're homes are not the answer because you know you have to upgrade septic systems and you got to wor wor worry about wells. I mean. It, yeah, the code, building code, everything that goes along with it. There's yeah. a lot. I mean, there's a lot. It's a regulatory nightmare for a town like us so oh. well we've got to work on it for sure yeah. it's, no it's doubt definitely people needs need work. a place to live oh wait, what's the what's the avenue with the state that i mean I, I have no idea that we could work on saying you know we increase the number of students in our schools and that increases the money that goes to you know like how do we change that so that it's more 
balanced and what's the path to do that? Mm. Well, I mean, we're, we're educating through school choice. We're already educating a huge amount of the county at our mm -hmm. town expense. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And, you know, you add more kids. We're, we're still could add kids to our classrooms because mm -hmm. the schools were built for more capacity, but we're not shrinking what we're paying mm -hmm. for. And, and as, as a taxpayer, when it on the average regular ed kid costs 18,000, and you're only getting 5,000 through school choice, it's not sustainable. Yes. And then when you add in more of our own kids, it, you, it just costs us a lot more money, that's all. I, I'm just, you have to realize that our budget is out of whack with educational costs already. And the state needs to hear from us that they're not paying. They're, when I started, we went to Boston and protested because they were paying only 36% of the cost of educating the kids. It is now almost lower than 20% of the cost of educating our kids is what the state pays right now. And nobody's saying too much. Oh yeah, schools cost, we need more money for schools, but nobody's organizing and we need to organize statewide that the state has to pick up more of the educational costs for us. If, if you can't ask taxpayers to pay when we're, we're educating the all countywide, we're educating, you know, it's getting close to 30% of our school school population is at $5,000 a kid capped. At least they could, you know, charge if more or allow us to charge more. It's the same price. 5,000 is when they started school choice. And how long ago, ago was that? At least 20 years ago or more. More. It was ridiculous. Okay. Sorry, another... Lily, you guys one more hand oh, up. Oh, Lily. Yep. One more. Um, just really quickly, um, I remembered this, that um, through senior housing, we've been working with the FERCOG and Alyssa uh, LaRose mentioned that they were looking at and starting conversations with the Elm Street owners who are apparently the children. Oh, Elm Circle, you mean? Elm Circle, sorry. Yeah. Apparently the children of the original owners. So I just, I just, just remember that. And I, I don't oh, know yeah. who in Deerfield is leading this. Um, it sounds like Jen is. <laughs> so Jen, I wanted you to know that, um, that it's probably worth talking to Alyssa to find out because um, she is the one who brought it to senior housing's attention that we could be denied if we didn't have enough. And so I said, well, what do we do? And she said, we're beginning conversations with them. So okay. just bring that up. So much. Yeah, we want to definitely get credit to the fact that we're okaying moving forward with renewing Elm Circle. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So we've got um, select board reports and announcements. Anybody um, want to announce? The, well, uh, it actually got on to the um, and history, oral history, oh, oral history project. I oh, wanted to oh, else, oh, go ahead. Well, just, just wondering specifically what the follow up is going to be if it's uh, uh you know how can the planning board help is it in casey's lap is it um, i think it's going to it sounds like jen's actually responding right casey yeah i think jen is jen gana is the is going to be doing it so you don't have to worry as a planning board okay all right so jen however we can help okay she may Jen's need help she open. may need help she may need help yeah well, yeah <laughs> whatever we have a lot thank to you. do so she may need help thank you we're there Thank you. Anybody, do you have any announcements you want to hit on? Um, I, I just wanted to, um, you know, we, we wanted to do the um, three town senior center I mean, yep. meeting. Yep. Um, uh, I did not get a call back from Linda Dunlevy about the Selectman's Association, but we want to move ahead yes. on that. Yep. I we did ask her moving. for um, possibility of a meeting on uh, June 16th so that we can all lobby for infrastructure money. Uh, Tim's email was fantastic. We want to make sure it is attached to the invitation. Um, yep. I guess that's pretty much it for select board. I, maybe you'll hit on this with your uh, town administration report. I just want to stay on top of the TIF. Well, you know, we'll We've talk about that. We've actually scheduled a meeting. Oh, great. Perfect. Oh, yeah, that's the great. meeting is scheduled for Friday, Friday the 3rd. Great, great. Okay. Um, I just wanted to read um, this. 
Sue Antonellis usually drops these in her box, and I just always want to, while I have an audience, say the Union 38 intro to field hockey. So they're offering, um, the rec department's offering an intro to field hockey program for the girls in grades uh, two and three. We're lucky to have Amy uh, Heflin, who coached her girls for uh, for three years, and Allison Barnes, um, former standout uh, field hockey player from Frontier as their coaches. They will be developing players and introducing the game through drills and skills. So, um, so there is dates May 28th, June 4th, 11th, and 18th. These are Saturdays at Frontier Regional from 10 a.m. to 2 p. Uh, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Let me try that again. 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. <laughs> sometime in the morning no um the cost is free so bring your kids uh but you, you do want registration registration forms can be filled out you know at deerfield.ma.us um you can send registration forms to the deerfield recreation department you can always get in touch with sue antonellis so great program for the girls um please sign up we are also invited i'm going to remind everybody again for the um Waitley's 250th celebration parade, which is June 26th. So uh, we need to help honor Waitley's 250th. We'll want them to help us with our 350th. So win-win. Um, so please, um, you know, people interested, just get in touch with us. We need to get a vehicle. We need to get something. I don't want to drive my car again. So um, maybe I'll we'll, drive mine. I'm going to drive one, maybe a loader. I'm going to get a loader from the highway department. We can all just sit in a bucket maybe and have and drive us around that is not safe You're i know no, probably not so if somebody would like us safe. to be safe please get a get i a will sit in the bucket <laughs> <laughs> we could um, have cold ones in there you know depending on how hot it is it could be nice and cold I, I sodas. Do nothing. i said cold sodas cold sodas yep. yes um so. we do have a memorial day announcement i just want to make sure people know that we're having memorial day on the 30th this year yes first time in a couple of years and i i'm very I'm happy sorry, that that's I back. We'll be gone for the weekend, so I'm we'll be there. It, that's okay. That's fine. I, yep. I'm appreciative of the opportunity for us to have the parade again. Yeah. What? So it's abbreviated. Abbreviated. I don't think they're going to do the parade, are they're they? They're not going to. I think they're just going to do a ceremony, yeah, and then they're going to drive the um, veterans to the different ceremonies. Cer oh, uh, really? Yeah, okay. they're not going to okay. do that because it's hard for veterans, veterans to, to walk, and okay. you never know what the weather's going to be like, that kind of thing. So they're, they're not going to do a parade, but they are going to do a ceremony, I believe, on the common. Yes. I think. Okay. Um, wait, I'd like to hear from okay. John as well as to what, what he has yeah, planned. But he, we like we to need attend. to get that on the website then. Yes. Yep. So people know what's going on, because yep. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's knew what's happening, here, but not but the thing. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. Um, I don't really have any other announcements. Do you have anything, Tim? Uh, uh, just a reminder that there is... Uh, a vaccination clinic. Oh, Race that's Friday. for the Board of Health announcement. Excellent. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. but that's we can okay. certainly announce that. Yeah, it's Friday. Board of Health. <laughs> I consider that select board. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. I'm kidding. Friday, 3, 3.30 to 6.30, we're going to have our clinic. So please, you can get Moderna or Pfizer. It could be first shot, it could be booster, whatever. Please come. Absolutely. Um, and also just to let people know that the PCR clinic is going to be closed on Memorial Day. So there'll be no PCR testing on, on Memorial Day. And they're looking to um, and the move hours outside are, a little bit, right? Right. They're, they're going to do email. a pop-up tent outside. And it's 930. They've changed the hours, 930 to 12. Yep. Yeah. 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 930 to 12. That's good. Yeah. They're opening up GCC. So yeah. Um, and I think they're trying to open up in Shelvin Falls too. Right. Ooh, I sound weird. Yeah. Good. Anything else? You want to hit uh, for well, health? for Board of Health, yes. Um, there is definitely community spread happening. Um, it's a mild strain. It's so, but, and so, there's still hospitalizations. Everyone seems to have been going in and coming out. So that's a good thing. Um, but it's definitely up. And the, there's still a percentage of people that are ending up with long COVID condition, you know, long haul mm -hmm. COVID. So it's really important to be as safe as possible. We're recommending wearing a mask. Um, the new variant that is circulating right now is highly transmissible. And, uh, but it seems like it's very mild um, if, you're, if you're vaccinated. And um, it has early, you know, it's short onset of symptoms, like three days-ish, but then it seems to go away fairly fast too. So 
please, please be careful. Wear a mask if you are inside. Um, ticks are up. Oh yeah. And we have we're having a big bump in cases, tick cases, and um, the associated other bacterial infections. So please, please um, check. check, do tick checks. Um, and we okay. have subsidized, I think there's 42 tests left in this year, but um, I talked to the tick report and they are willing to subsidize how many, if more than 42 tests, you know, requests mm -hmm. come in, uh, they'll figure it out and bump it to our next appropriation so that, because it's in the springtime now that it happens and in the, you know, fall, uh, October-ish. So Paul from the Tick Report, who came a few years ago, is going to come to our end of August meeting. Um, I believe um, it's the, um, oh, it's the August 24th meeting. He's going to come and just do a, a few minute presentation Good. on the latest update on ticks and get people ready for the fall uptick mm -hmm. in ticks. We need to get a bottle of permethrin out. Yeah, again. permethrin. Yep. You, you can go and get a cheap, cheap Bronco horse spray from Tractor Supply. It's now bumped up to like, I think it's six, six something now, but a bottle, but it really will last you the whole season. It has enough permethrin in it too. And just, you want, if you spray your clothes, let the clothes dry. And then, um, so it's, and it doesn't irritate your skin at all. It's, the military has been using it for years and it's the best thing really for your clothes, spray your shoes, that kind of thing. Um, but every time you wash, just respray. And um, it really makes a difference. My husband has been cutting wood and he finds dead ticks on his pants because he sprayed his pants and Good. shoes. And that's, you know, so he hasn't had a tick bite for a long time and it really does work. Don't spray your cats. Right. It's not it's not it's not good for cats. But your horses, your you know even puppies, you can um, wipe down puppies and then just clean off the perithium at the end of the you know after your trip and you've checked everything and you know your outside tour. But it is it is relatively benign. Um, the te t uh, mosquito testing is going to start up after Memorial Day. Um, the highway crews will be starting to put out the next kind of rainy um, episodes that we have. It's really dry now, so it's not worth it, but they'll put out the BTI dunks in the catch basins and we will treat up by um, our hot spots in towards Waitley Swamp around the schools and um, in the visitor center mm -hmm. behind historic Deerfield, we'll get our hot spots treated and hopefully won't have any disease load this year but right. we've we'll have out for a little bit yeah we've had two years yep. i mean there's more factors than just mm -hmm. you know we've been treating but we have been treating our hot spots and so for the first time in 13 years the last two years we've had no um disease load which yeah. is really amazing very good yeah very good work we're working on it alex do you have anything you want to hit on or do we get it all or do i think um I think that's uh, about everything. I don't know if I'm forgetting anything. Oh, um, no, I think we're good. Just the septic is roaring like crazy. Perks, Title yeah. Fives, you know, uh, food yep. inspections, um, the whole kit and caboodle. I think COVID, we got uh, 62 positives so far this month. Mm -hmm. um, so I just checked our latest uh, uh, positivity rate uh, for the past uh, two weeks. Um, well, yeah, and it's about 8%. So we are seeing a little bit of a vertical, you know, shift in that regard. But again, we are having the, 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 the vaccination clinic on um, Friday. So that's going to be exciting. We have about 85 people signed up, but right. um, I do anticipate that we're going to have um, a lot of uh, walk-ins as well. But I do want to remind people even though the FDA did approve for the Pfizer booster for the five through 11 year olds, um, the, the vendor that we're going through, uh, uh, which is Walgreens, also still needs to go through um, the state approval. And also the, well, before then on Thursday, they have to have the discussion with the uh, AIPC uh, at the federal level and then state, and then uh, Walgreens needs to approve it. So I don't think it's gonna happen 
you know, right before the, the, the clinic happens at 3.30 on Friday. So I do want people to be mindful of that as well. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it at okay. that time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You so All right. Um, um, I just actually, yeah. there is one more okay. thing. We we have wonderful volunteers for our EDS and um, we have been doing ICs, ICS training and other things, but at the latest Homeland Security meeting on um, yesterday, uh, the priority for the federal government now is to reinvigorate CERT, which is all your volunteers, your non-certified volunteers. So we are gonna be able to have um, some money for CERT training again of our volunteers. And so I'm, I'm really, really excited about that. That's great. Yeah. Have so some funding. yeah, so we'll be doing that in the next few months, hopefully over the summer, so we can get it done before the winter. I know people are working on minutes, but we don't have any tonight, correct? Okay. Um, so uh, first discussion item is the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Upgrade Project Change Order for approval and signature. So this is a change order. Um, it's actually quite a few. There's number six, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So they're all kind of grouped together. We've got a signature here, but it's, um, it is a decrease actually uh, of $9,000.47. There's multiple increases, multiple decreases on the different projects, but we kind of grouped them all into one change order. So, um, any questions on that? Anybody have? I can go um, over I guess, what they yeah. are. Can, so, so totally, we're we're ending up in the positive, right? Yeah, we're we're decreasing a little bit here with all these changes. I mean, it's only nine thousand, but with all the changes, right? Between the credits, because there's at yep. least there's three credits. Yep. And one, two, three, four additional costs. Mm -hmm. So the net. Is a decrease. Is a decrease for this one. We did have a change order of fifty three thousand six thirty nine, which was um, previous one and two, and that was for the Eversource after they did the study, yes. realized Electrical. we need a bigger yeah. trans transfer and stuff there, um, transformer. So that was that one. But but the all these change orders actually wind up as a, as a decrease at the moment. Okay. Perfect. And really, it was kind of we didn't do a manhole where we thought we were going to need one and. There were some um, there were some other yard piping we did, and some um, additional time and extension for adding the scum and plant water piping changes. Um, I know they did some work um, putting in a sump for the um, aeration tank, as they were, you know the one that wasn't being used because we had to pump that stuff out. Um, there was a lot of gunk kind of left and on so the they, bottom, and they eliminated the electric hand hole. Yep. Okay. Yep. And um, so that was a ten thousand dollar decrease. Yeah, there's there's quite a bit in here if you want to go through them all. But yeah, um, but yeah, yeah, it seems to be. I mean, all they're right. a great they're a great team to work for at work with, and um, yeah, I'm so thrilled that they're um, they're on our project because there's you know other projects across the state that aren't as favorable. Oh no, absolutely. Yep, we're very um, very lucky. Do you want us to do this individually, or do we just? I think say, it is just one because it's, it's all combined. It's all combined. You guys into need one. to take a vote. Okay. To yep. I, I Someone will, to sign it. I yep. want to make a motion to approve the change orders as presented. Thank you, and authorize the chair to sign. And yes, and yep. authorize the chair to and sign. And I'll second that. Thank you, Tim. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. All right. Um, this is really wonderful. Waterline is such a good contractor. They've been awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'll let you fill in the date and stuff on that. Um, so then the next item. Let's see Yankee over candle. Here. Yep, one day liquor license for Yankee Candle. Got a few of those. Um, this is uh, powder. Hollow Brewery serving beer and wine in the South Court yard. Yep. It's a Pride Day Pride event. Day event. Nice. Yeah. That's great. And that'll um, be. Um, so day. I will make a, a motion to approve this. I'll I'll second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. This is for June 4th. Yes. Uh, yep.
And then there is um, another one. Did we do these already, or you just use signatures? On oh, so you want me to explain that? Yeah, okay. I thought we so. Those are those are treehouse permits. Yeah, we need the the boards approved them, but there was some language changes oh. from the ABCC okay. that we also reflect on our our permits. Mm -hmm. So Pat made the revisions. You guys just need to sign them. Okay. So we, we don't need to vote on them. We just nope. sign them again. We've already we've voted. Already voted it's just them. ABCC made changes themselves. All right. Well, we can do that. I'll just get it done here before we take off and forget. everything there for you yep um so we have a memorandum of agreement uh we're not doing at the moment right no we're going to hold we're off gonna on hold that. on that so we have yeah, a we'll signature pass, pass, pass on that yeah uh acceptance of the land and water conservation fund grant and authorization of signatories yes so this is this is the grant that chief Kaczurek was yes. very instrumental in getting it's been in the pipeline for quite some time. And I just want to say thank you to John. Yeah. This is entirely, on that. His this entirely his effort. It's huge. huge. What you need to do, Trevor, what the board needs to do is authorize the. Yep. Um, nope, that's a different one. That's a different one. Um, is it in here? This you package? need to authorize signatories on the state contract. So the state contract has John listed. Okay. And the local project contract has the CEO, which is normally the chair, unless there's yep. a different authorization. So the board needs to take a vote to have those authorized, those with those two signatories authorized. So wait, so I make a motion that John is John Pachorik is authorized for signing the grant. The state contract grant. State state contract grant. And, and then the chair is authorized on the local project. Document on the, on the local project, and that's not going to okay. mess us up as far as is Kate good with that? Okay, great. So I'll make I'll second Brenda, that motion. And, and Brenda's okay with it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Right. Yeah, it's just how they drafted the documents. And you'll have the documents later to sign. Yep. You're just taking the vote right now. Yep. Okay. So any other discussions? Um, when when is this officially going to be able to be announced? So we have to get the documents back to the state by June 16. And, and we're waiting for them to do their well what they're going to do public. so we had a training session on this and they're trying to move on it now that they've finally gotten approvals mm -hmm. so we've already had one training session they outlined the program what we need to respond to them with and we we're pulling all that stuff together it needs to be sent back to them by june 16th then once they've received it and endorsed on their side we can move forward okay. with items that we would have under that grant okay great okay and then we didn't really want to talk about it until they had the chance to talk about it right so right they kind of right thing. this yep. our official let the official letter is in your packet okay um, great we were hoping we would get it but we weren't sure until we got the official yeah. letter yeah that sounds so. that's wonderful good deal um okay so did we vote that yet i can't remember i think no carolyn made no. the motion okay I'll, and you seconded it second. oh i'll second yeah i seconded it all those in favor Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay, that is good We got go. sidetracked a little bit yep. of comments. Sorry. Um, the uh, FERCOG pollinator project grant application and letter of support. And this is, uh, this must be the one here, right? Yep. So this is um, Kimberly, is it uh, Noki? Nope, McPhee. Oh, nope, McPhee. There we go. Yep. There's another last name there. You know um, Kimberly. So, um, the town of Deerfield is interested in participating in the continuation of the uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments po Regional Pollinator Plan project for Franklin County. We recognize that pollinators are critical to the health and climate resiliency of our natural ecosystem. Uh, pollinators are 
um, are also uh, vitally important to our local farmers and to the sustainability of our local and regional food systems. Deerfield is interested in working with the FERCOG to identify opportunities and locations in town for pollinator habitat and expand educational outreach to our residents. We also recognize the importance of working with neighboring towns to develop pollinator, cor uh, pollinator corridors that support the biodiversity of our watersheds and regional landscapes. Deerfield has uh, provisions in the town zoning bylaws to regulate large scale ground mounted solar uh, photovoltaic installations. We are also interested in working with the FERCOG to review the best management practices for pollinator friendly solar arrays developed by UMass Clean Energy Extension and evaluate how our bylaw could be updated to include provisions for managing vegetation under and around solar, um, uh, solar arrays to support uh, native flowering plants and associated native pollinators. We look forward to working with you on this important project. So do we have a motion to? Um, I would make that motion. Okay, and I'll second it. Any um this further discussion yeah i just this is um managed by the FERCOG, so it's mm -hmm. not any additional work but it is it sort of dovetails with what we're trying to do with our yard by yard yep. proposal and Fantastic. um we just had um a franklin conservation district meeting today that the grant is going in um that hopefully deerfield will be able to um have consulting um you know persons consulting with um individual homeowners and we will actually be able to purchase plants for homeowners to do like dragonfly habitats and the great, you know, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's and we and this fits in with our healthy soils and that mm -hmm. um, initiative where you're trying to, you know, again, um, takes the the water table in Deerfield since when I was on the initially on the planning board in the 80s and 90s has gone up by 18 to 20 in inches. I mean. That is really substantial. Oh, it's right out of the ground. I mean, it's it's, it's right craziness. Mm -hmm. And so even people that had, you know, old homes that had dry basements have wet basements now. And so what we're trying to do with the healthy soils is talk about, you know, if you increase the organic matter in your soil, even by 1%, that's 20 or 30,000 gallons per acre increase in retention of, mm -hmm. of moisture. So. You know, you want to you want to hold and store water, but you also want to filtrate water so it's going back into the ground clean. So mm -hmm. the whole idea with the healthy soils, the yard by yard, every every this is all climate change stuff, and of course our pollinators are taking a huge hit. And it's it's so important it's so important for our farmers as far as like I mean, we don't if, need if, like if they if, if they don't pollinate. People are we, not getting food, food. security is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. We're growing our food and, you know, out in the Midwest, out in the West, everything is drying up. We have extra water, this, and we have higher temperatures here. That's our climate change challenge, but our farmers are adapting. But it does no good if we don't have farms to farm, farmers farming farms, but mm -hmm. they don't have pollinators to, yeah. you know, um, po you know, we're making sure that we have food. So, uh, uh, I mean, this is like, it, everything is related. So this mm -hmm. is Great. Really highly important Come for our with. farmers. Uh, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you for listening to my harping of. <laughs> Super important. But it is, it's all related and it's, yep. and so this is very exciting for us. Absolutely. It's additional support without additional costs and workload. So we have the testimony letter for the town clerk treasurer collector split to the legislature. I it's not I done sent, yet. Oh, I, you, I, I, I sent a draft a week or so ago, but they something? have testimony letters separately. Oh, I but I'm working something. on one for you guys. Okay, I just haven't so we'll come back it. to that. All right. Yeah, Sounds but can good. we, um, if it, if can we just because we it's another vote two it and weeks. then we'll come in and yeah yeah vote and then it. when it's ready yeah. to sign. Okay. So essentially, what it does is it describes the situation, the background, it outlines the fact that staff are, we're totally understaffed. Oh, completely. And you've got particularly two people yeah. bearing the brunt of a, a, of a four three person. and a half person yeah. job and asks the legislature to move quickly. Yeah. And I okay, have an good. update in the town administrative reports just so All I right. can see.
but that's, that's essentially what it does. And it asks for their support to proceed quickly. Mm -hmm. And so it's three quarters of the way done, but I need to be able to go back and look at so it. So I'll make so. a motion to, uh, that we sign each sign the letter at when, when it's complete at our convenience. Yep. Just let us know. We'll okay. come down yep. and sign we'll come down and second that. that. All right. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I just Thank don't think we can wait two more weeks. Yeah, okay. no, we'll just come in and do that. Um, the community one-stop support letter for review and approval. Maybe is that still working on that one too? Nope, it's there. Ready? Okay, that is. Oh, this is right here. Yep. Yeah. Oh, perfect. So I make a motion to. I didn't to, finish everything. Just some. <laughs> I make a motion to support um, to authorize this, the chair to um, sign the letter for the one-stop. Great. We'll yeah. second it. Okay, so on behalf of the Deerfield Select Board, I'm writing to express our support for the grant application to restore the former green, uh, grammar school senior center building at one uh, at uh, 67 North Main Street. Um, the grammar old grammar school senior center building is located in South Deerfield Center near shopping, banking, other municipal services. Renovations will address a dearth of public meeting and flex space, provide room for regional senior center activities, as well as much needed municipal office space and storage space. Um, this prominent building is currently used for abbreviated periods of time each week for administrative functions and as a PCR testing site due to a lack of municipal space. The Old Grammar School Senior Center is an integral part of our town's civic presence and a reminder of our history. It should continue to be useful to our citizens, particularly as the town's space needs and demographic demographics change we're all signed oh in. that reminds me we did make one selectman announcement was um tomorrow at 4 30 is the yes um, oh how do we forget that yeah is is the senior uh <laughs> programs no, no. too much going on I, I totally spaced that as well yes please come every that's at uh waitley waitley, waitley, waitley town, town hall, hall. The, the old the town old? hall. It's the the old are town you town. sure? Because I saw it somewhere as Sand Gully. Sand Gully. Yeah. You mean uh, Sandy Lane? Sandy Lane. I thought it was no. I, I thought, thought it was the old town. You hall. guys are probably was... right, and I'd be in the wrong spot. Hold I just want to make email. sure. You guys keep. You have a vote to take, so let me check my email. All right. So we're voting <laughs> on the um, the community one stop letter. Did we already vote that? You didn't we, actually. We I didn't? think you okay. the motion, no. it was motion, the motion was yeah, made, and seconded. made and seconded and then, right. then we got distracted. There's yes. no other discussion, is there? No, All thank right. you. <laughs> um well then Tim Hilchey, aye. <laughs> Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Wait. Um but we I think we need to go back to that. Um the Waitley, we need to announce that. Yeah, she's looking, looking it up looking. right now. She's looking it up. Uh, looking. So the presentation is here. Um, the presentation's in your email. Okay, why why it. everyone's looking it up? I completely spaced out. Also, that you need to clean. You need every everyone over fifty five needs to complete their survey for senior housing. Um, it's online. Um, if you, anyone needs help, Lily Dwight at six six five eighty five seventy six will help people get their key code number and do it online with you if you have a problem, okay? So please, please fill out that survey. This is how we're gonna get public financing for senior housing. You're right. It is the Waitley It's old, Waitley Town Hall and yes, Community Center, 194 old, Chestnut Plain Road, which is right across from the Waitley. It is, yep. So okay, it good. is the old town It hall. is the old town hall, <laughs> the white building. So please come, please come see it. Forget uh, I, I, it's too many. Because there's too on. much going on. He's not wrong. 430. Yes, 430 4 tomorrow. tomorrow. Please come. I will not be able to be there, but um in even. in spirit. Yes. Okay. Um so Peter Thomas Oral History Project. Okay. Um the Kleins, and I'm trying to think of their first names. I cannot remember. But um did everybody finish the one stop? Did you have yes, yes they voted it. Yep, we voted it. All right, sorry, sorry. Um, so okay. Um the, what we want to do for the 350th is do oral histories, especially of our elders in town. Mm -hmm. um, the PVMA did it a few years ago. They're, they're wonderful, yep. beautiful archived um, things to go and review. But several of our persons have since passed and we want to get started as soon as we can. And we have FCAP money and there's this um, Marie, 
Thomas, who is Peter Thomas's wife, and um, a couple people from Historic Deerfield have taken the, this workshop and they train people how to do oral history. And we have F, you know, money from the Comcast sitting in our account. And Peter is looking for about $12,000 to run this workshop for um, a refresher for FCAT people already, as well as any volunteers that we can get in the community to sit with our, certainly our seniors to start. This is for anybody, but certainly we wanna get some of the stories of our seniors going. Um, and I, I feel like this is a, a well um, meant expenditure of that money. Um, and, and we will so appreciate it for to be yeah, archived forever. Absolutely. I think um, it's super important. So, and Jonathan, I did talk to Jonathan, um, who's in charge of our FCAT, and he is more than willing to, um, he thinks it's good training and he's willing to participate. Right, Jonathan? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Deerfield, did Deerfield have a historical society? Um, no. We have a historic commission. Commission. Yeah, you don't have a historical society. Yeah, we don't have one. So but see, we nice you get, to get something together. You get I mean, your historic the commission people. Or right. Any volunteers in the community can take this training. Jonathan and I spent some time in Conway last night listening to some fascinating history. Conway um, lately at both have historical societies. They do a lot of lectures. Lectures, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Yep. I think well, it's John, to do. Um, Peter Thomas has some really cool things Absolutely. for our 350. I just schedule. like to sit and listen to him talk. I don't, I know. He could read the newspaper. It'd be fine. Um, so I have to ask a qualifying question. Yep. Um, we should check with Brenda to make sure that those peg access funds can be used because they're generally used for capital. This wouldn't be uh, yes, it a wouldn't capital. Be. It wouldn't issue. be training. We couldn't use it for workshop. Uh, Let's ask her. She'll capital. be back on Friday. Yeah. Okay. Before okay. you hit go on this, find let's some ask. other way to support it. Well, I'm sure I mean, we do have we do have some funding from you know the 350, but yeah, I let's we, ask first. Or, or yeah. I just want to be cautious to because that's what, yeah. I don't want to no, that's get fine. it. I would rather ask now and let you know I'm concerned about. Yeah. It. Yeah. I thought it was Good for idea. anything to related to our our. Um, well, I want to ask her. It's been yeah. a while since pay she access money for programming. We'll find out. Yeah. Let's okay. see. I just want to make sure before the the what? idea is to get make sure everyone is up to speed on on the FCAT and training, but then also train as many volunteers as possible. So it'll be like a workshop, open to everybody, so that you because they're inter, how you interview, especially older persons, is how you get them to tell their story, yes. the real story, and with a lot of detail. You have anything to add, Jonathan? Just, just what Carolyn said. I've done a lot of interviews with people, and there's a whole art to it. And yes. you want your stuff to be done effective. It's good it's, to get the right training. Absolutely. And, no, I think it's great there. idea. Totally support it. it. You just can't replace that stuff. So no, you, you, you got to have it um, when you can we, get it. Would you mind if I made the motion to support this, and we just try to figure out a way to fund it? it fund yeah. it because um, we need to. I want to keep moving on this and if and we have next because of Memorial Day our 350th meeting is next Monday so I wanted to go to them and say we're going to move try to commit get a date right. with the clients because they they're not you know nationally known and we need to schedule them. Mm -hmm. I will be present at the next 350th Perfect. meeting too. Perfect, John. No there, I had some questions about some of the events and okay plans and when you guys are going to bring the cake over here and everything. Yeah. Oh, thank you. We, well, we have a whole year of stuff happening. So yep. part of it is, Jonathan, we, we want you to, we want you on the calendar so that you know it and you can come and film it. So great. Thank you. Cool. Sounds good. Well, I'm, I'm appreciative of you doing it because it's, it's truly a wonderful thing to document. And so thank you. I also, You're welcome. While we're talking about history and stuff, we have uh, we present um, a cane to the oldest resident in town. And I'm, I know when I first started, I, um, we had presented it to a woman at the, at the senior center. And then, of course, we, they don't hang on to it. We present it, and then we bring it back, and we give them a little, <laughs> little presentation. Um, that was why we have our stipend, so that we can pay for flowers. And exactly. And you, need, you need some stuff Because it's not like a that. budget. It doesn't it's, come out of town money. It comes out of, it comes out of our money. It should, but you should budget <laughs> for that kind of stuff. 
Um, but anyways, um, I just want you to know it's been going on for a while. Yeah, well, there's. But uh, we haven't done it for a while because of the pandemic. I know, and I think it's time to kind of get that going again. I'm I'm not sure if the the recent um, recipient um, who who the oldest one in town is. It's not when you reach a hundred, uh, but it's when you if you are the oldest person in town. And and I had a um, a resident reach out to me and asking she um, her grandmother was going to be um, is is reaching a hundred, and she thought that's kind of when you got a cane. But it's not. It's your oldest person in town. Yeah. So I'd like to kind of maybe check with the clerk and just see wh Absolutely. where we're at Absolutely. and um, and make sure that we're still instituting that thing. Cause I think it is pretty special. I don't special know where we are do. in that because we haven't, truthfully, we haven't done that because of the pandemic. Correct. It's been, it's been three years or so, two, at yeah. least two years. So I just want to follow up on that while I had it on my mind. Um, Perfect. So job description, select board, board of health administrative assistant. Do you, no, bypass. I okay. would. I wanted you to pass that over. I we'll didn't get a chance to send it to you. Okay. So appointments, uh, resignations, operators in list. training, in operators in training for hire. So we have two operators in training for your consideration. Okay. Oh, um, this is wonderful. That's awesome. Yes. Um, Here we go. I'm finding it, it is, now. Now I just yep, went Joshua to my Burnell, other, the rest of my my Corbin information. Lay. So it's Joshua Burnell and Corbin Lay. Yep. And they've gone through our hiring oh, great. process. And these are the the group that did the interviews, suggested these folks. And it was this Eric Meals excellent. and Chris Miller. Um, and I think Jennifer Oh, this is great. Jennifer. Yeah, yeah. But, so he would so Eric it would prefer that if you if you would appoint them. And I have to say that um, with Kevin being here administratively he hasn't chris miller's been doing some of this other legwork yeah so no i think this kevin's is great. aware of it um are... kevin's in favor of it but we really got the recommendation from eric that's great no these are great uh they're you know graduates so of franklin tech and would say yes please hire I will, people, Casey. I will make a motion to um have appoint. me do the offer letter right yes have um <laughs> the town administrator do the offer letter for joshua Burnell and corbin lay or I will second that. It's great. No, I think it's. This, I'm, I'm this really is excited exactly to what have. We're looking, for, we're so. looking for young people that we're want a good job. Hard. This is a good career. Got a good education. Yeah. Yep. It's good. Wonderful. Any further discussion? Questions? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you, Chris and Eric, for getting that together. It's awesome. We're getting some help. Finally. Very excited. About yep. That. Oh, it's great. That's excellent. Um, let's see. We've got um, we have some appointments, right? I, you have I, more I appointments. Did, so did let me go through what some. you okay. have information on them. I'll just go through it quickly. So we and it was sort of a roundabout thing. Um, our former select board member David Wolfram would like to participate in the town building yes. advisory committee. Yep. He's been, as you know, he was very interested in making some renovations to the church and you know doing some stuff with the senior center so yeah. i have a roundabout email that says hey i'd like to be on it uh, he called so, me and confirmed it yep he had reached I, out to me as well and was interested I, in serving I think, that's I think it's great we yeah. get more yep. people in he called me last week to talk about it okay great and that's oh, where wonderful. the email stream comes from <laughs> all right that's perfect <laughs> so nice that julie through. mentioned it yeah. to me yeah, no, I think it'd be great to have his, you know, his knowledge. Uh, yeah, on, on David, I, I want David still. to contribute. Um, Super to continue contributing to the, He's very interested. To the yep. church project in the in the senior center. I mean, we need yeah we need to get this done. So, do I hear a motion to appoint David? I will make that motion to appoint him, David Wolfram, to the town building advisory committee. And I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank you, David. Then you have an appointment to, of John Sizz to the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Services yes. District. Joanne Carney um, was considering stepping off and it just so happened. So Pat Kroll was reaching yep. out because she's developing our appointment lists yep. for next meeting. This is perfect. And they had a, an informal discussion and John is very happy to do that. So I would- He's fantastic. And he's I fantastic think working person with that. Well, I was just gonna yep. say, he's very committed. He's, he's, he's been wonderful. Um, Not that we don't appreciate for... Joanne. 
Oh yeah, she's been great. Oh no, Joanne she's has been so good busy. about going to um, doing a million things. Yeah, but she's been really good about going she's to meetings. Been, so we got to yeah. have what it is is you want our person to show up to meetings. Right. So, okay. And John oh, is so dedicated to our yeah. veterans. I mean, yeah. there's nobody else I, I can agree, think 100%. of. I agree 100%. So I'm thrilled to death that we he's willing to do this. Yep. So do I have a motion to? I'll make that motion, Carolyn. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And thank you very much, yes, John. Yes, thank you, John, for serving. That's great. So the next one is John Glavacki, and I'm probably butchering the poor person's name. That sounds right. Or Jim Glavacki as a public weigher. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'll make that motion. Here a second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. This is um, up in for uh, yeah. True Car. Yeah. True, okay. Yep. True Car. True. Yep. You'll see another <coughs> list on the first of June for your, you know, for some of the other folks. Right. I just wanted to make sure it was for the True Car. Yeah. This is a new hire. Okay. Casey? We have that other one from Chris wanted us to, Chris yeah. and Paul. Oh, yeah, no, we have. Um, sitting right Chris here, thank Curtis you for reminding the... me. Rock, Rock. Rock. Yep. So, I think yes. this went to Chris Curtis by accident. Yeah. Yep. That's okay. It Chris oh, Miller. it was Chris yep. Miller. That's so okay. Chris and Kevin requested appointment of William Rakevitz, affectionately yep. known as Rocky in town, to fill the position vacated by David Driver. Thank you, Yeah. Jennifer. And look who's here. Hey, oh, Kevin. Kevin. Hey, hi. Welcome. So good to see you. Oh, you're, you're muted. muted. You're muted. We want to hear you too, not only see you. Yeah. That's good to be good to be seen. Yes. And not Kevin, uh, it's really I'm so excited to see you in person. Yeah. It's good, really good to have you here at the meeting. I, I hate I wanted to text you a lot and call you, but you know. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Anytime. Yep. Phone's always on. We if I can, you. I answer. If I don't, then I'll get back to you. Yep, that works. That works. Yep. No so this would be great to uh, to get some help up there. At, I know that uh, exactly. and everybody's been working super hard up there and um, doing a great job. We're getting I, I'm seeing a lot of compliments um, from residents just out of the blue that are are really thrilled with the way they're being treated and, and helped at the transfer station. I can't thank you know your team enough for that. They're doing a great job, and I try to tell them that as much as I see them. Well, so um, yeah, and I'd pass it along and. And the, the guys, you know, like I said, the guy, guys are doing a great job. And I think Rocky's going to be good um, because he knows a lot of people in town already. He's a friendly guy. Um, I think he's going to be a good, be a good fit. Great. Yep. And I just wanted to say that, you know, particularly Kyle Kabeniak has been uh, yes. he's young, energetic, friendly, and um, Jim Schaefer has been great as well. So yep. good team up there right now. Yep. Absolutely. I, um, Kyle is very sweet. Oh, excellent. Yep. Super friendly, TV, helpful. But yeah, yeah but he's really nice. Really great team up there for Jim sure. Um, it's really nice. To, yeah. Know, he's helped. Yeah. Very great. Um, so do I have a motion to hear a motion to appoint? Um, yeah, I'll make the motion. Instead. I'll second that. We do hire instead. What's that? We do hire instead. It's just cleaner. Motion to hire, you say? Yeah, I'll do a job. I'll do yeah. an offer letter there and stuff just because. I make a motion to appoint uh, to, to have uh, Casey Warren um, complete the hiring process. Complete the hiring process. There we yep. go. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Sorry. Thank, thank you. you. No, that's, no that's fine. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appointment here. Versus thank you, Kevin. Kevin. Yeah, thank you. Have a great night. See ya. And um, then the last item in this placeholder item, and there's a reason we keep it as a placeholder because sometimes we get these e these emails and requests, and we know that there's certain times that we need to move quickly. And for instance, oh. transfer station attendant was yeah. something we felt we felt we needed to move quickly on. Um, there's also a letter from Bernie Sadowski. He served on the zoning board of appeals for quite yep. some time. Okay. He's notifying the select board that he does not seek reappointment. Okay. Well, I thank um, Bernie for his um, years of service to the town and um, really appreciate the work. And um, thank you for the notification. It helps figure out where we're going. So um, I don't think we need to take a vote on that, do we? Mm -mm. Nope, just a notice. Okay, thank you. He'll fill out his time. The only the yeah, other thing that we term, have right? um, for voting, I th we don't want to forget, is the dump sticker. Yeah, I want to have a discussion about that. Okay. 
Yeah, Kevin, Again. stick around. Stick around, Kevin. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. <laughs> um, do you want to talk about that now? All right. I think Let's it's important it. to make sure we talk yes. about that. I have to say that this fell off my radar screen. I apologize, Kevin. This it is... fell off my radar screen because Kevin wasn't here to remind me. <laughs> yep. So no um, we always have to kind of evaluate cost of running the transfer station. And we try to make that a um, as much of a zero-sum game as we can. So Break that even operation. Who, who, people who use it pay for it. And... Um, and and not every taxpayer pays for it, so um, we try to, we try to do that. And I think you know with cost of ship, I think Kevin will probably say this as well. The cost of hauling bulky items and everything in recycling world has gone up, um, and just the trucking has gone up. So um, so that the I think you do you want to make a recommendation? We'll listen to you, Kevin. Or you, do you want me to do it? No, you go ahead. Continue on. You're doing great. So I think. Um, and we we have been informed that the recommendation from from Kevin and, and Chris and others are to uh, set the dump sticker at uh, seventy dollars this year instead of sixty five. So it'll be a five dollar increase for the sticker, um, and we would continue the senior citizen, um, you know, kind of discount of getting a, a, a section of a, a packet of bags, small bags. Um, or they can put it towards the price of a use full. The value. Of oh, okay, the value or use the value. Price towards towards the larger bags um this is the first time we've had a price increase in the stickers for how many years well, kevin long, Qu been, long yeah. time at, at least three i want to say at least three probably closer to four yeah it's been a while yeah. um so sticker sticker price we haven't touched sticker price in probably at least four years yeah. and i want to say it was probably about three years ago that we changed the price of the bags yeah you know so so historically the past three years you know we've been on um, fairly the same you know flat funded but like you said i mean everything is just going out of sight for us at this point in time right now um and especially when it comes to the recycling because um the recycling like you said has gone up and our stuff no longer goes to bonnie's island island anymore um because they closed that down which basically uh puts us up another 18 dollars a ton um to dispose of which doesn't sound like a lot until you're thinking about the thousands and thousands of tons that we get rid of every year so it's it's, it's pretty significant yep. um it basically works out to just over like sixty eight hundred dollars um you know and i'll be honest with you you know i, I tried to look at it and see if i could to, to absorb it within the existing and and I, I just don't see it because we're always trying to run so lean as it is so you know i, I think this is the best we could do with what we've got yeah I agree with that, Kevin. I think, you know, you have always looked at your budgets and figured, how can I uh, absorb these costs? How can I um, make it more efficient? How can I not raise our rates? How can we not, you know, every one of your budgets are always that way. And I, we, we very much appreciate that, but it, there does come a time where rubber's got to hit the road and you, you know, and, and we, you know, the residents who use it need to pay for it and that everything's going up and that is what it is. So, we, you know, I support that for sure. Uh, but I did want to talk about bags. I was just going to say, so what's your recommendation on the bags, Kevin? Keep the can, same well, price? We, can we, well, we, we, we just purchased like $15,000 worth of bags. Large bags. Just um, now? No, uh, okay. let's see. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, about 20 minutes ago. No, just kidding. Um, no, I actually I, I ordered those when I was in the hospital um, yes, back in February. Yep. Um, because I knew you know I knew that they were they were very far behind as far as manufacturer. Um, right. I was trying to get in before we got the next price hike on the uh, petroleum yep. for the uh, uh, the bags because it's smart, plastic. Smart move, Kevin. Smart. Um, so and and to be honest with you, because of the screw up that Waste Zero made two years yes. ago with the small bags where they sent us they were they were packaged as large bags but they were small bags yeah um and so we we cut a hell of a deal where where it's basically it's we we gained about 50 percent on each of the bags um and then they went ahead and they tried to replace the the new ones i understand going with stickers um i think greenfield does both stickers and bags yeah um you know i can dig into that a little bit deeper i yeah, I, I would love to do that. I think, I mean, I just think uh, long term, I know the bags are probably biodegradable, but the idea of buying more plastic to put in more plastic mm -hmm. to put in the thing, it just, 
And then, uh, you know, yeah, a lot of people, plastic, they sorry. are, yeah, they fall apart they fall when apart. we use them. So That's I why they're biodegradable. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're a mess. So I, I just think, you know, <laughs> I was talking to Jim up, up at the transfer station too. And I said, what, you know, how would you, he said, look, uh, he's looking over that. And the guys mm -hmm. do a good, very good job up there. So they're, he said, well, you know, you have a big bag, three stickers, you have a medium bag, two stickers, one stick. And then I feel like they can manage it and they don't see a problem with how they would see that i mean they manage the stuff that gets dumped they do yep. they want a tight ship there and i think we could we could really get away from buying more plastic to put in the landfill and just put stickers on the people yep. are already putting stuff on a bag and then we would just you know they would monitor it's i mean certainly you'd have way you know sometimes i'll put two bags sometimes i'll put three bags it depends on what you can stuff in that bag now but i think if you had a sticker system i think we'd do all right i mean we'd have to study it i'm not saying change right now it's find out what other towns are doing how is it working is it you know are they losing money is it good i mean i know you're nervous about it but i'm, I'm, I'm nervous I'm not. because the enforcement of it i don't I mean the guy didn't jim didn't see an issue with it at all he said not a problem he said it's a smart idea i think she think we should do it so well you know i would like to just add a couple of caveats one sure. is that um, you get a large thick mill construction bag mm -hmm. and you end up with construction materials mixed in with other stuff. And so I wonder about that, um, where these, these, these bags, yes, they can break, but basically you, you can know, only put household stuff yeah, in it. And, and, and it, it's sort of semi-transparent. You can see into it. Mm -hmm. So you know, it, it's just a thought. And, and I wondered, uh, Kevin, whether you've done any studies to figure out how much is the, uh, the, um, Composting, has that reduced the amount of uh, tonnage or has it uh, been a wash? Uh, how has that program helped? Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I cannot intelligently answer that question right now. Um, I can find that information out for you. Um, you know, that that's a Jan Amin. I just need to go ahead and check with her, look at our numbers to see where we're at. You know, like you said, compared to where we were with um, when we started the composting. You know, um, during the summertime, you know, the composting, they come once a week and Usually that that little dumpster is, you know, we we had to increase it from a three to a five. Yeah. On um, and like I said, summertime usually it's pretty full. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's there's definitely tonnages that's definitely not going into our regular waste stream. Um, you know, and it's and it's going for the greater good when it becomes a, a better compost. Mm -hmm. I think oh go ahead. Well, no, I was just gonna no. say, so I, I I do think the sticker question is is is, um, needs to be studied. Yeah, I, mean, I, I agree with that. I'm not looking to change right now, but just like this, you probably saw in Deerfield. Now there was a huge like, what are we doing this for? Why are we, you know, mm -hmm. stickers would be a lot better. Let's find out. Are yeah. they better? Are they not better? I just common sense thinking like, why are we buying more plastic? It's a pain to go get them. Like if you could just get a roll of stickers, you'd have them. I just think, I don't know. I think it's worth looking at. And if we can reduce our footprint and stop buying petroleum based stuff to put in the landfill, I think that's just a smart thing to do. But you're right, there is enforcement. We'd have to see it. We can always switch back. I just mm -hmm. feel like it's worth looking at. And um, I'm, I'm not seeing if it's. I'm just getting, I get nervous from a regulatory point of view. Of course. Yep. Yeah. You, you know, let's poll our guys. Let's yeah, you know see how, how other towns how, do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. how hard it is to enforce i mean you know we just enforcing stickers yep sometimes is the issue and the other thing is we're not really saving on the plastic because i'm going to buy the plastic bag with the sticker so same amount of plastic is going to go in there it's just um you know you no you wouldn't be buying another orange bag what yeah, we're so i never i i always put you know i use the orange bag and, and i put in the stuff that can go into the trash i don't put a plastic bag oh, inside the yeah, orange yeah. bag a lot of people do yeah so yeah. But, but they're probably going to still do it because they're going to take the little plastic bag out of their house. They they're are. going to bring it out, put it into a big plastic bag. Yep. And then they're going to take that plastic bag. And it's, it's probably, you know, three mils thick instead of what we've got. Yep. So it's, you know, six, one half dozen, the other yeah. on that side. But I, I, it's a lot the question of whether the sticker is a better way to go. That's certain, we'll, we'll definitely Let's look worth at studying. It. Yeah. Let's look at it. 
Okay, yeah. so I'm, I'm done. So the, uh, but what are the costs of the bags? Are we staying with what we're having right now? I mean, they are fairly expensive. In the same. Um, we believe that, you know, cause I, again, I talked with Chris and we, we've crunched some numbers and we believe that the, the price of the bags themselves will be okay with. Um, if we go ahead and we just do the absorption of the, the $5 for the stickers okay. out of the 1500 some odd people that we have on um, that historically purchased stickers uh, should cover the cost and that way the bags stay the same. Okay. So, so it's, so it's, it's a, it's a one-time sting of purchasing the sticker compared right. to every time you go ahead and you get the, get the bag. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. And, it, and is there the, the secondary, if you have a second car, it's another $10. It is. A, yes. That, stay in the that is correct. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. So any other discussions on this? You hear a motion to approve? Or? I I will make a motion to um, have the sticker price raised to seventy dollars. Now second. And yeah. this with the senior um, small package, or the difference towards the purchase of the large bags. Okay. okay. Still a very good value, I think, with the cost yeah. of I, I you know getting trash picked there's up. There's not there's no there's nothing we can do. Our I mean the costs are going up. And our guys do a great job and I think they run a good service. And I think yes, you've got to bring your I, stuff. I would here, rather have the stickers go up five dollars than yep. to have the cost of bags go up. Correct. Because what happens is that really you know we talked about this in the past, Kevin. What, you know what's the price point before it starts showing up on the side of the roads and then mm -hmm. our Picked up plenty. highway personnel are picking up and hauling it to the dump and you get nothing back yeah so yeah. somebody was actually buying tr orange trash bags and filling them up and then dumping them on the side of the road that did not make any sense to me but <laughs> i picked them up and brought them to the dump so that's kind of a you know okay <laughs> a question Hey, if I could do a real quick public service announcement, please. If, if anybody sees illegal dumping, please report it. Um, yeah. Because realistically, when um, when we have to go on the side of the road, we have to pick it up. The town absorbs the cost of the disposal of this, so it's costing everybody. Yep. There is one area, uh, very specific, and, and it's it's unfortunate. It's not on, well, it's not on town land. Um, but it turned into a huge dumping station. Um is on San Gully North, you know, it's, yeah. it's horrible up there. Uh, so if, if somebody sees something, you know, say something. And the bottom line is, is, you know, just don't do it. Yeah. This is your town. Have pride in it. Please. Right. Exactly. Pick up trash. Casey. I was just wondering if the board would consider a friendly amendment to add uh, the notation about the additional sticker for a household being an additional $10 each yes. in your vote. Okay. In the motion, I'm sorry. That's yeah, I have no problem adding in um, the $10 additional for additional car. Each each additional car is $10 in that household. Any okay. uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilgey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for um, doing it. I yeah, just didn't want to miss out on that. No, thank you. And thanks, Kevin. It's a really no, good thank, thank you all once again. Appreciate the support. Hey, good to see you, Kevin. Talking stuff again. Yep. Um, so I think we, we're on to the town administrator's report. <laughs> oh, you actually are on to the mail because there's something I want to explain. Oh, okay. So you I have always like to skip three the mail, mail items. <laughs> um, the first one is a notice from the DP, or a notice from Eversource that they filed with the DPU to make adjustments in, 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 I think, monies that relate to their energy conservation efforts. The second one is a Bikes Fight Cancer fundraiser ride. It's a notification. So it's right after the DPU one. OK. Um, yep. Do you want us to vote on this? I was wondering. Now, I, yeah. the info's gone to Chief Pachurik and his comments he's forwarded to the organizers. He has no problem with it. OK. But I wondered if you wanted to vote it. I. I, I would I'd be willing to vote it on the condition that the chief is satisfied that yes. all his conditions have been met for mm -hmm. safety. Yep. So I would make that motion to support the bikes fight um, cancer uh, charity ride on Saturday, June 18th, um, on the condition that um, the chief Pachork is um, satisfied that his safety concerns are addressed. 
And I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Chairman McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And thank you for your service. Um, it's yep. great. It's really great. I assume these are um, motorized bikes. That's just a guess on my part. It may not be, but I don't know. Okay. okay. And then the yep. third mail item is from a resident, um, a property owner, Doug Ryan. He's requesting clarification of ownership for land along Old Deer, Old River Road. And this is kind of a complicated request. I guess he made this request several years ago and there was no action taken on it. So there's going to be some research needed. He he sent me the email. He sent me the email. I had two conversations with him. I'm not sure exactly what we have to do. I do know that the property is his property abuts what's the old, it's actually an old county road. And it mm -hmm. used to be where old river road was. So the road was moved. The county commissioners, it appears may have discontinued the old river road section, but there should have been some property record changes that we didn't do. So I need to, to figure out what it is we need to do. But he asked me to make sure that the select board received his request and acknowledged it. Um, but I did tell him we've got to do some research before we can so proceed he, with any town responsibility. Does he actually own the property? He does. He owns property along that section. That, right. And he wants to he, wants, he wants us to us, give him yeah. that he wants property. Us to notify, he wants us to make that record. So I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. Yeah, we should find out does he does he actually own this land that we he wants given to him? Or well, is he it owns land property he, adjacent to that old road? So he owns property along the edges of that road. So the reason, I actually visited the site, so I can speak. Oh, thank you. Tim knows all about this was it. from the Conservation Commission um, yeah. because all state uh, there's an issue with all state. His neighbor, yeah, building road on his property and draining water into his property. So they're, they're in okay. discussions. I suggest yeah. that we you guys talk to each other <laughs> and figure it out, right? Uh, because the the new administrator up at all state for for environmental issues is says, look, yeah, well, let me talk to. Him. Yeah, see what he could do. Yeah. Okay. So he owns a strip of land um, that's right along the current river road. Mm -hmm. Then there's the old roadway that sort of, I don't know if it ran through the Allstate property or how it actually. Yeah. Um, like and so it runs right through the middle of his property. There are there are steel pins in the roadway that show the corner of his property. Um, well, actually, the property is a little fifteen feet further from the pen, but um, so it's got a narrow band of property with a building in it. The roadway comes through it. And then he's got his other property that's um, clearly his. Mm -hmm. um, and he explained, he explained that, that back when the county was, was reorganizing the roadways there, that there was a, a declaration that this property had no value. And somehow he ended up becoming the person that was designated i think the town spent three hundred dollars or something and declared this you know non-usable so basically the this land this he says it's his and he's got a bunch of paperwork which i started a, a file in the conservation commission to because it was in the building department mm -hmm. just to say okay we've got these documents in the building and now we need to do the research to figure it out yeah I'm just wondering what the registry of deeds show and well there's we're gonna have to that's what I mean. I, would, have I, would, I think it. what happened is the reason why we had we nothing was done is because you have to appropriate money to um, do deed research to do surveying is and that, then we declare it you know surplus. I think the process is no different than if it was a county road that's because it's abandoned. Yeah. It's abandoned county road. So we have to go through the same thing as if we were surplusing it. And then we have to take it to town meeting and declare it surplus. Town meeting has to support us turning it over to them. Yeah, so it's not and, a small process. Yeah. And I think the reason why it never got done is because he came in when we had 2008, when we had that huge financial mm -hmm. um, you know, hit 
and and there was no extra money to do this whole extra process. And it's not his responsibility to do that research. No. It's the town. I think that's why the town does. He's got, does a, lot of, he's got a lot of the research from the, the, oh, the right. records. But yeah, we but have, you have to verify. We it. have to do it. Right. And and we have to appropriate the money to do it. Then you do it. Then you take it to town meeting, and then you you know the town meeting has to vote to surplus it, and then we vote to surplus it to him. Yeah. At no cost. I mean, it's just it, it's a research then it project. Tax. It's then it becomes from taxable, yes. But the process, the problem is, it's just like steam mill. Or, I mean, you have to go through this whole thing. A lot of money. And you they have to not. You have to. Easy. You have to go through. You have to make it sure you take the land by eminent domain. You have to file that because you have to have a clear deed mm -hmm. so that you can declare it surplus and get rid of it. I mean, it's mm -hmm. this is a lot of money, and you have to go through. I mean, this would probably be. I mean, and it's less. Did, it's less than five thousand dollars, probably. Why? But it's still going to be five to ten thousand dollars. Does he need it for some reason? Well, that's like I'm it, trying to figure out why it's we. A, because it's a clarification of his property. I mean, he's but trying to clarify. It's abandoned road, and usually, if someone wants it, we go through the process. But it's just you have he to go through the whole process. He has two sources process. of property on either side of this that he owns, so he wants some clarification there. And because can we, he can't sell the property until there's clear title to the property. And we can't give it away until we verify it. Correct. It's the property. Take it by eminent domain. And we could not sell it? The whole thing. Well, apparently the, the Could we county, sell it for the cost of doing all the work? That's it's a question. For it's council. abandoned road. I don't think you can. But I don't think you can know. either. All right. Just wonder. Mm -hmm. Trying that, to find a solution. So that's the thing. That's I do want to talk to Lisa about it, yeah, but I figured do. it was a let complicated us, one. Let us know. But we had hard fiscal times in that year when he asked, does when we were had that struggling the yeah. financial hit. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's when that's when so the when market the just fell apart. Crashes and everything. Okay. So we had no money yep. to do it. Okay. And this is Thank the you property me. that the used car dealer is gonna be. At, right or is that a different property no, it's the same one i think it's same the same property yeah. he's, he's renting, renting from himself. him yep yeah, right. to do the yeah. the thing okay and then he has a separate issue with yeah. water runoff or whatever yeah. okay all right well let us know what, what yeah, lisa have, thinks we're gonna have to take that one up okay i mean it's uh, a reasonable request it's just it is it's just mm -hmm. you know you gotta fund it you know you can't expect to take it out of our budget when everything is so tight. um tight yeah. We we list everything that we're going to do, and then mm -hmm. we go to the finance committee. And, and yeah. it's an unanticipated request because you know I wouldn't have expected it to walk through the door until the day it did. So right. mm -hmm. you never would. And well, I know we had already talked to Tim about it, um, but I didn't know what it all looked like. It, so what we should do is make sure we budget for it, or if we have money left over at the end of the you know budget year yeah. here, and we maybe can do it too. Shifting of accounts. Yep. Okay. I'll see what I can do. I have to talk to Brenda. Do you want me to go through my updates? Mm -hmm. Is there just a signature under here for each, each of us? No, but usually we it? use this. Usually we use the stamps, but oh, we can't. Oh, great. Oh. Because we don't have a stamp for Oh, Tim so yet. all three of us should sign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's why it's there. So I told you about the ABCC changes. Jennifer, do you have an update on the website? Tag Shit your it. Job. Okay, so we've been working on the migration and we had our reveal of our website internally yesterday. And we have a date that we, I have to go through with town staff to see all of the, the links and things that did not get migrated and for what reason, and that's due by Friday. And that's over like 300, pages of details of of items that we have to check to see what why they didn't get migrated and what what urls are not working on our website and what needs to be um, changed and updated then we have three days of training that will happen two in may and one in june uh, and then Finally, we'll have our, our last meeting. And at the end of June, we will have our launch of our new website. You see you're holding your breath. Yeah. <laughs> but, but 
that thank you for Lee work Lee's project. Gonna, Lee's going to call you as soon as it goes. I know. Live, yeah. Right? I'm listening. Thank you for doing. It's work not going to be it. perfect. I and know. say thank you. It's it's and you know what what I want to do is right after our launch, maybe even that same evening or next select board meeting or something, have a. Q and A, you know, to let's let's learn the website with Jen, you know, and <laughs> you actually, you know, you could actually do that with Jonathan and go yeah. through the website and have Jonathan tape it for you. Yeah, and then we can we can just sort of if people ask questions and you know it's in the the thing is is that it's intuitive to me, but I spend every day <laughs> in working it on the website. working on it, you know, and I know where to go and how to get information and you know. So, anyways, it's it's. Um, I'd like to have very much. It would be very much appreciated. I hate our website right now. Well, I think you're gonna like this one, and it's really pretty. <laughs> nice. That's great. That's it's great. got button. It's got widget buttons, and she's done a lot of work. She and Pat, they're learning, you know, how to compile all the widget buttons. But there's the heavy lift. And Jennifer, do you want to talk about the training day? Right. So I didn't realize this, and I should get my hands spanked for this. But um, it's an all-day training event for all users, and it's a Thursday. And I said yes. When? May 26th. Oh. Right? Yeah. Oh my God. So and that when was, you say all users, do you mean like every town employee or well the, the people that are posting things on it? So okay. That would be, you know, me and Pat and Sarah and Jen. Suze and Jen doesn't really post anything oh. on it. Okay. Um so, I mean, Casey and I spoke a little bit about it today after she was like, what? Um, because like if Casey and Jen were available to answer phones and people, because what we need is, is what we're gonna do is everybody that doesn't have two screens will need to be in the main meeting area and then I'll put it on the big screen and then they'll have their laptop. So yeah. we, what you can do is you can look at our current website and our new website at the same time and make changes with the training. At, you know, they couldn't do it on a Friday, huh? No, they had these set dates, and actually, I had canceled the Friday one, and that's why the 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 third training day isn't until June seventeenth. So they're really far apart from each other because oh, I. So have these are how many one day events? No, 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 no. Oh. no. Um, okay. two. Two of two of the training are just like Pat and I because we're the yep. we're the you whatever the website yep. Manager. Right. Yeah. So Pat and I will go to two half day trainings and then the all user will be on Thursday. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it'd be nice if we could, you know, Friday would have been good because the place is right, closed. Right, because the place but, is closed. Yeah. And right. that's the thing. Um, Should we alternate closing that? We, well, that, we talked you, about that. I think it'd be confusing for people. Should we just um, try to close or you just well, thinking of? Jen Wallace and I don't use the website as much. I okay. will want to know how to post things. Yeah, for sure. But I can learn that. This is a very familiar website for me because yeah. it uses the same functionality as we used in Ashfield. Yeah, and I love Ashfield's site. This is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little more comprehensive. Yeah, good. But I think if Jen's not going to like this, not this Jen, but Jen Wallace, because she's going to be inundated. But, you know, if we don't have people train on this website, we can't transition. It's going to get a lot worse. It yeah. will get worse before it gets better. Right. So you rip the band I off. would yeah. like to be able to change the training, but I don't think they can, right, Jen? They can't change our training date. Okay. So I can't. I'm so sorry. It, the, the only other thing we can do is so I can work phones with Jen mm -hmm. Wallace and she can handle the window. It just means people just need to understand they have Give me to a rough do this. Day. Yeah. If so we want to make this change, they have to do this. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Not much you can do about it. No, and they're well, and, I mean, we're also gonna be in the main meeting area. So I mean yeah. if, it's right here. Something we'll happens. Somebody somebody will see what's going on. Yeah. Right. Okay. Maybe we can put a note. I don't know, maybe start posting a note on the yeah, door we'll that post tomorrow. we're going to we be limited to services this. that day or something. We can put it on our current website. We can put yeah. it on Facebook. We'll put it on the doors. I mean, yeah, does it mean that, you know, there's other people in the building department, you know, all of them, except for Sue, are going to be there and working. Right. So, 
I yeah. don't know if Karen, I don't think Karen Menard actually posts much. She usually gives whatever she wants to, to Pat to do. Yeah. So whether or not she wants to be there, but you know, she, her, the assessor's office will be open and. Right. Okay, um, that's fine. That's what it is. So, All right, next item. Um, I wanted, Tim asked a question in an email to me. So I'll just give everybody an update. Hampshire lumber. Mm -hmm. So we met with them like two oh. days before town meeting. Okay. And we told them, look, we can't deal with this until after town meeting. Yeah. Um, but we sat down and had a brief discussion about what we thought their Hampshire addition might look like. And mm -hmm. you know, I've mentioned it before, but we need, we mean me and Bob Walton need to sit down with council and go over the items that rose to the top in terms of discussion items for yeah. that meeting because there's some legal counsel in right. information we need. Yeah. If there's a land swap, mm -hmm. we also need to sort of itemize the process that we do this because they have to do a site plan application. Mm -hmm. So we need to have some other things in place. Um, so I wanted to let everybody know that we have, so Bob and I have our meeting with Lisa tomorrow. Um, so we'll have a little more information at the next meeting. Okay. Um, but. So that land swap process, the access, mm -hmm. stormwater concerns, the coordination of the projects, because they'll be doing their site plan and we'll be working on the Leary lot. Right. And I did find out that we have a little sticky wicket. ARPA funds come tied to federal and state procurement requirements, which are more complicated. Oh. We had a focus, I love my STAM group. We, had a, with, we have this focus 55, so it's an hour training session. We talked to one of the auditors at the state and he outlined that we need to be careful about certain things. So Steve Ellis has provided some information for us, for the other STAM, admin, town admin, the STAM people, mm -hmm. so that we can access the differences between federal procurement and state procurement. Because okay. the, one major, the one major outlier that we normally rely on is there is no exemption for engineering. You have to procure for engineering. So oh, it adds a level of procurement that we weren't you mean anticipating. Federal requires it, but state yes. doesn't. Interesting. Yep. The state has an exemption. Federal does not. What First, they have is different thresholds. You mean do you you have to um, you can't just pick who you want to use? Yep, you can't you do can that. Other, it's it's other in entities. the state you can they consider yeah. engineering like lawyers. Right. 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 You pick your law. Exactly. There's a consultant right. engineer. Yeah. Yep. But, but with this project, no, we've got to we won't be able to do okay. that. So, so let's, it changes the landscape of the project somewhat. I haven't sat down and drilled into it because right. I just found right. out. And I've been so far, I've been to three of these. So yep. is that the same as you have to get three bids? It depends. That's what I have to yes. look at. That's yeah. what I mean. Okay. It, you're, you're not only subject to state procurement rules, you're subject to federal procurement rules and there's different thresholds. Okay. So depending on what we're looking for, I need to know what it is yeah. I'm asking for. Did you, did you find out who they were thinking of using for, as an engineer? Well, I we were talking about it. Um, we have an initial design from Ty and Bond, I think. No, but the uh, Hamshaw, who they might use. I know there. I know the gentleman's name. I can't remember the name of his company right now. Okay. He called me on Monday to All check right. in about the meeting. So. Well, we'll get more info I, on that. I, so we're going to need more info. Yep. Is really, what it is. It's really important that we have the same engineering person. Well, that we ha well, they or need to be able to, to work together. Yeah, That's what we need. Sure. Is they need to, to be able to work together. Okay. So I wanted to give everybody a, an update on the shared streets and spaces program. That's okay. the grant program that Beth Janini from the Cog and her colleague Lori Scarborough helped us with. So she's checked in with Mass DOT. They haven't decided yet. This is the crosswalk? Yes. Okay. Um, For the park. But MDOT should be announcing within the next two weeks. So cross your fingers. And, and I do want, I know that you're, I replied back to an email today. I'd love to meet with Matt. Yep. And just so that was my next thing. That, okay, sorry. So there's one thing between that. Um, I've mentioned this to you guys before. My colleague, Sean Sahowski in Athol, Yep. He's been really following the cannabis industry bill. Oh, yes. And Natalie sent me a preview of it. She sent it to Sean and Sean it just has more minions. So mm -hmm. he was able to plow through it faster right. than me. So what he did, he sent his own letter to the mm -hmm. legislature, but he also sent a, an email to the other stammers with 
three items that really rose yep. to the top of this. And I wanted to bring it to your attention because you could also send Natalie a brief email that outlines these three things. And so what it says is the, the, the key things that affect the small towns are support for amendment number 19, which adds language stating that any host community agreement in effect prior to the effective date of this act shall not be subject to commission review throughout the initial term of such agreement. Right. And the reason he says this is because the what they want to do is walk back yeah. the community, the host community agreements. Yeah, and you, you wonder know? who's funding that. And so that's part of the issue. You know, what they would do is they would essentially, and, and we already have contract this, law that deals this, with this, this but it would right. it would destabilize all the work that a thousand for a thousand community host community agreements, and this which is ridiculous. Has spent thousands of dollars exactly writing these bylaws exactly. planning this for the state by the way and so sean mentions that in more than one area so yeah. i wanted to bring that to your attention yes, i can absolutely. forward you his emails yeah but read, what i did was yeah. i just pulled out the things that really stuck out to me and so then supporting amendments 15 21 15 and 21 which so they have house bills and senate mm -hmm. bills yeah and so he's looking at the house bill but in H4791, which is the House bill, um, to streamline document requirements. Because what they're doing is sort of building out, you need all this stuff. Right. Um, and that's not necessarily true. Exactly. And then he suggests opposition to Amendment 23, which regards the impact fees. Mm -hmm. it, it basically says um, impact fees as unnecessary, whereas breach of contract already falls within the subject matter jurisdiction to the courts. No. No. So this we is... already have jurisdiction through contract yes. law. Why would we complicate it anymore? Exactly. I know. I know. I cannot believe And I have to say, I've sent you guys emails at like 4 35 o'clock in the afternoon, you know, right before, remember it happened before the climate forum, mm -hmm. because I saw all of this and I had spoken to Sean. And so, you know, I have to say that Natalie and Joe are paying attention but your voices count. I, I make a motion that we um, support his, uh, what he's outlined, those three things. You'll hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. This is ridiculous. Yep. This has cost us so much money and we, are, we, we don't get, I, I still, we just want some I money to come in. I still want an answer from <laughs> We have been so much on trying to Deerfield be on top Naturals of this. Deerfield Naturals as to their plan moving forward. Nope. It's okay. So, a motion to support Sean's comments, yep. or well, how yes, you want and to do or it? a letter to letter. We want to send a letter. Duplicate letter. You've already told us about those comments. We okay. agree with those comments. If you want to add more of them, I'm fine with it because I'm sure he's coming from a. Letter. Yeah, he's, well, okay. he's been on that for a long time. He has, yep. and it, one of the reasons he has is because Athol spent so much money. Well, I know. And it's not like and they he, have and a ton Steve of money Ellis to spend. Has spent money in Montague and you know Hadley and everybody spent a fortune we on did this. All the states and now they want to walk back yep. all the work that we did on zoning bylaws, legal fees, negotiations, they everybody's didn't do time. Their job in the because state. what about us? You yep. know, I, I will be frank, they'll this really burns 20%. me because I know how much my colleagues have worked on. They'll take their 20%, yeah, but, it, but we'll we're we're left with three. But we have been paying, we've been using taxpayer money so that we could collect this money. And then for, for them to pull the rug out and yeah. leave us is ridiculous. It's and awful. we've been working really hard. I know, I cannot tell you how long, I mean, probably 10 years yep. of going to meetings so we can be on top of this. And we still have yet to collect money. Yep. And I'm, I'm just, I cannot believe it. Okay, so I just wanna make sure. So I'm actually gonna take that yep. sentence, Carolyn. That's what I was just yep. typing. Uh, yeah. Um, because Sean makes an allusion to it, but he really doesn't speak to it the way you oh, just did. Just, just, so I'll take that sentence. But right. I yeah. did want to let you know because have, it has been something we've discussed before. You know, mm -hmm. we were we've been I know. going to meetings for years. We've been we tromped down to Boston. I don't know how many times. I mean, this is really sickening. And Franklin and County Select Board meetings and I know just and all then kinds of throw it out. <laughs> yep. I cannot even believe it. Yep. Oh. So. I, that's why I brought that to your attention. Um, yeah, I wanted so to nice. give you an update on the home rule petitions. Yep. So the town clerk treasure collector split petition will go into the house this week. It needs to be assigned to committee. They will process the language and they'll 
give it a hearing date. Okay. That's why your testimony letter is important, but we may actually to need to show up yeah, even remotely. Yeah, I'm just give us a time. Because I want to show up there. at least remotely. Yeah. I don't drive well in Boston. No, we'll just, <laughs> we can get on. But no, then, you know, if they're doing remote, you don't yes. need to go to Boston. I did say that if, if it would make more impact, I said to Natalie, you know, I'm happy to go to Boston. I just need to plan it because it's busy right. in there. Yeah. But no, if we could do remote, that would be a little bit easier. They're doing remote easier. till at least July 15th. And that brings up one more thing. Can can you find out how, what, what are they're thinking? I'm asking. July? I've asked five times. They they it's crickets. They're not talking. I know, Carolyn. I'm asking that question because it's important. I mean, you're already scheduling meetings, right? Yeah. That's so, the thing. So if they happens, if they right. we don't know what they're going to do, but I will make that point to Natalie. Well, I know, I know our state commission meeting is just we re rescheduled it before the, the J July 15th deadline already just because no one knows seems to know so nobody I, knows i know i don't I know, know where every where they're sitting on the fence on this one but i think okay i think i mean state hopefully agency, we'll know but i don't we may not know that. until eleven fifty nine on july 15th, yeah. well, which is, is really is, disruptive i know it is highly disruptive well they do is, have a habit of doing that though well it, it's just that there's homeland security meetings that are already being rescheduled and the state commission meeting we scheduled on purpose before the 15th just so we could still do zoom so you could shoot I mean, natalie an email and ask her I but know. i've asked on my own because it's it's of concern to I, me because of how we're doing meetings i already made a comment but i, I think if we're going to send out a letter i think we should I just asked if they could extend it. I mean, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. I know we it hasn't cases are up. Even if, we still if, should have the no. freedom. If if we feel that there's enough community spread and we don't want to meet in person, we should be still be able to meet. So meet that's the point that I think they're wrestling right. with. Whether you know, I mean, part of the wrestling match here, here is when there's nobody here, it's fine. But if it's really controversial. When we have community spread, we should have the option to go. And so they're wrestling with, do they make this permanent or do they extend? That's really what I think they're wrestling with. Well, I mean, Charlie should just make it till January 1st or uh, something. And let I the new know. governor make it. Do you have an next item? I do. Um, so the additional liquor licenses. So the five years for that expired. I did get confirmation from Cameron Weiss and Senator um, Comerford's office. So the board needs to consider how they want to move forward, whether you want to pursue that again or make a change in the bylaw. And I will say, now that I've had conversations with Cameron, I understand what the legislature looks for when it comes to these liquor licenses. And this What's, may have been what, refined you refresh since me on this again. So what this is, we put a liquor license request for a home rule petition to have right. the legislature award three additional liquor licenses to the town. Right. And it was directly related to marijuana retail right. because the limitations in the bylaw limit us to two retail yeah. licenses. And so three additional, 20% of, th with three additional licenses gives us more opportunity. Mm -hmm. But that home rule petition never made it to the house. Okay. So I found it when I got here and we pushed it out the door. Yeah. And then we've had consistent conversations about it because it can take a while to get mm -hmm. through these. And so my last two conversations with Cameron and Senator Comerford's office really revolved around economic opportunity, whether these licenses were ready to be assigned. In other words, did you have people waiting for these licenses? And um, the fact that, and Carolyn was aware of this, the fact that there's usually a time limitation on these licenses when it relates mm -hmm. in these cases. So. I finally, we finally narrowed down the factors. We knew we were at the hairy edge of the five year period that this can be active. And he confirmed last week that it had passed it. So one yeah, thing that came out of that though. We've been waiting two years. But they never sent it in, that's the problem. Yeah. Oh. All right. We felt, we realized it, um, my predecessor. So the home rule petition was voted. What you then do is you send it to your, you give it to your rep. Uh. And they send it to the house and they go through the entire process I just talked about. So it didn't happen. I found it when I got here and I tried to get it in as soon as I could. But we knew that there was this looming out there. The issue in this case is one of the things that came out of that conversation was a consideration because the legislature looks for this. 
as to whether the town has identified and made a change in their bylaws to, to create a framework for an eco economic opportunity zone. They look more favorably on it if you have an economic opportunity zone identified in your bylaws. For a liquor license? Related to, it's an expansion of economic opportunity adding liquor licenses. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's what they're looking at. So, yeah, so I just wanted to tell you, these are some of the factors that sit in front of us if, you wanna, if we wanna go this path. Um, and the only reason option? we- yeah. There's an, the other option is to change the bylaws. To say that you can have free marijuana. To say that you can have more retail li licenses. Let's just do that. Let's just do it, that. It, it may be an easier it's question. Much, there yeah, is going to have to be some PR around it as well. From mm -hmm. from my observation as a person, I think. You mean? I think you guys are going to need to talk about it and and get some community engagement. If okay. you're going to put it forward, I don't know. It's see, like I don't know what the vote was like here in Deerfield when it like finally went through. Seventy percent. Okay, then maybe yeah, we won't have to. Yeah, we're good. So and I just wanted we, everybody to hear that at the same time. licenses because nobody's actually opening up anything. Right. Point, I want an point answer. to the chair. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So there's also, I just want to rem remind everybody, and I, this went to John. I didn't hear about it. Um, the, the bill that we had to extend the three police officers mm -hmm. um, duty period, yep. that was signed into law by Governor Baker on the 8th of November last year, but the bill for continuation of service for Gary Sebelia is still in process. Right. So that's the update on home rule. Okay. And then I did finally get some information. Thank you, Natalie. Um, MDOT has a new operations manager down at district two. His name is Matt Minahan. Yes. And you guys have seen some emails yep. in blind carbon uh -huh. copy uh -huh. cycling Maybe. between me and Matt. Get to know him. Um, what he Sticky did buns. say, Carolyn, to your point and questions about Stillwater Bridge, the 25% completion plans show a 15 foot travel lane. Oh, thank God. Maintained throughout say. construction. So I sent him, immediately sent him an email and said, please keep that. Yes. Don't so I, that. I, I put my I plug in worked, there. I have worked so hard for that and it kept. Popping in and out. Yep. So it's there. Okay. But what, the reason I said please keep it there is because the plans change from twenty five percent completion to seventy five percent. What we have to do is we need to have a tickler on that to make sure we check. Yep. Well, I'm hoping to get to know the guy yeah, so I can talk to him. That was the whole sticky point. Sticky buns, a meeting. So we're what, all get what I said to him was, it's going to be the other question that Natalie was helping us follow up on was um, Sugarloaf Street. So he asked me some questions about Sugarloaf I Street that, that I really don't know. What part of Sugarloaf Street we're interested in? Yes. So I'm thinking. I don't know that. So I'm I, asking because this I'm predates thinking, me. I saw that email. I'm thinking, let's just forget the whole rest of it. Let's just work around the common and mm -hmm. say that's the park. Well, that's where our focus is right park now. Street. Unless, yeah. unless they, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that we have to end discussion, but no, let's just, just get the it way it's going, it's going to be like forever, forever. So, so let's, let's approach just him. educate me about Sugarloaf Street. Yeah. yeah. Why would we want to own it? If, <laughs> the, town, if the state is going to pay all the costs. Of it. I mean, so they, I know they're so they don't, they right. don't yeah. maintain it enough. So right. the, the idea is that we, if you all know the story, they own Sugarloaf yeah. Street and Conway and we can't really do anything with the common that or Park right. Street or anything. So you're right, we would want to take over that That's section right. here. Yeah. The rest of it. So why don't we focus on the edge of, and so, I was yeah, just need that Kevin is about Kevin's to speak back. up. Hold on just a oh, second. It's Kevin. So do we just mean around Park Street and Sugarloaf where they meet at the cop? Right, And because you know, this is the first time, Street. this is the first time that we've had, had anybody say we could break it off just right around the common and that's, right. So let's jump on it. And Kevin? Kevin? Your turn. Yeah, the question I've got is, is um, originally when, when everybody was talking, you were gonna go back to um, basically um, the old fire station. Yeah. You planning on going that far? You know, so basically you're gonna, you're gonna basically bring it to where the cemetery is. Yeah. That okay. sounds about right. I mean, cause we'd wanna have, I just think we'd want to own our downtown 
And mm -hmm. uh, but but we need them to upgrade the infrastructure before we take it. But and they I, have it. But because we have the money to do the common now, I really want to talk with them about where crosswalks go. I don't want to do something that they don't agree with, or they think, mm -hmm. you know, they have smart people there too. Like, how do we lay this out that works for us they, long term in Elm Street? They put in the transportation bond bill money to upgrade that place. So maybe we can get them to encourage just around the yeah. common and, and do that right away with so us with us tying it together to, so we don't invest in it and have them come in and do something different right but this, if, if they will upgrade around the common yeah. everything including the underground stuff and the drainage and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff then we can then we'll take it over around the common so we can control the downtown yeah, I mean that would be so ideal. I think but it this also is the first time. This is the first time right? that anybody's been willing, right, right Kevin? This is the first time that there's been any discussion of just where the because that's all we're what really interested. Yeah, right. I noticed this that too. This is the that only we're really only interested. Thanks, in Natalie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I don't. So when you see her, say thank you. <laughs> yeah, but this let's jump on it quick. Okay, so right. basically what Trevor said to me when he saw my first email was, "I'd like to have a sit down." Um, Matt Minahan's offered to do a remote. He's offered to do a sit down. I think what we first need, Kevin, and I'll reach out if you don't mind, I'll reach out to Chris Miller and just, we need some measurements. We need to give Matt Minahan an idea of distances. Okay. I so, think we have to be, tr we have to be worried a little bit, uh, Kevin, is they will want us to guarantee that there's going to be a sidewalk um, bylaw. Yeah in the, our, our, we may have to. our fall meeting, which, you know, I, we had told them that we were going to do a sidewalk bylaw. We were going to anyway, put it off. but we kind of put it off. So if we're going to negotiate this, okay, I'm, so I'm, I'm worried sidewalks. that okay. they're going to come back on the sidewalks. So we need to be prepared for that. And we need to have Lisa do some research that, you know, I mean, DOT is coming in and they're putting in all these sidewalks. Who's going to do it? We can't right. do it. We well, don't have the, staff. So what's come up, Kevin, is is they've put these sidewalks in, and they just assume we're going to take care of them. And we got, we don't have the manpower to take care of a mile of sidewalk. More than along that. five they're and putting, ten, they're putting in sidewalk from the Waitley line to the Greenfield line, and they want us ultimately no. to take care no. of these. We no, it's not going to happen. Can't do this. Not going to happen. So the alternative, and, and I actually had a conversation with Tim Meyer about this months ago, is we have to brainstorm how we're going to deal with it. Most other towns have sidewalk bylaws. So, you know, that came up and I asked the board about it. And, you know, we, we just weren't in a place to take that on for spring town meeting. So it's it Carolyn's sure. right. We should think about it. Well, I'm just saying, and if plan they're going to have it. a meeting, they're going to counter us. Where's our the sidewalk bylaw? So we might as well be ready for it. Okay. Yeah, because they wanted us to try and take care of that section from <clears throat> from Cumberland, well, actually from the fire station all the way to uh, um, park and ride. The park and ride. Yeah, the park and ride, and it's like no. It's not going to happen. You know, we don't, we don't have the material, you know, we don't have, you know, they plow all day long and they throw all their, they throw all of the stuff from the road onto the sidewalk and then they expect us to go ahead and take care of it. Yeah. No, sorry, man. It's it, not that. It's not our sidewalk. You know, it's your sidewalk. It's, it belongs to your, it's, it's attached to a state road period. Right. It has nothing to do with the town of Deerfield. Right. Yeah. And so that's, that was part of the issue is well, there they was don't some want question to about that. They didn't really communicate well. Kevin. You say so, sidewalk by law. Just open oh, a little. What is it? What is so it? Short so, for? So typically, uh, people would um, you have to clean the sidewalk. Yeah, yes. maintain the sidewalk for you. A lot like Greenfield. Right. I had the sidewalk there. Well, I had Northampton the does it. If, yeah. they're, they're intending to put sidewalk all the way up to the Greenfield yeah. line. So, yeah, like, right. you would have to take care of your sidewalk. But that, your house. But that's a state thing, different than, yeah, right? I've got a, a town thing. I don't know. I've got a, uh, you know, guardrails in front of my property. So, they're going to put it on the other side of the street. I don't know. Yeah, Actually, they've got them. If you look on five and ten, they're behind yeah. the guardrail. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm just warning you that yeah. that's Carolyn's right to make that note. So, so as what we chair, have to do, we have to what we have to do is come up with a sidewalk bylaw that is good for us. So, yes. so as chair 
of the select board, I'm trying to institute a get out of here in two hours or less meeting yes. time frame. Yes. So it's eight o'clock. I'm, I'm looking, I'm packed up. I don't want to rush Casey if she's got a couple other things. No, I just I want wanted to let you quick. know. So I've had a lot of project <laughs> meetings, community one stop. We're still working on that. You'll okay. see some information on the sixth, on yep. the first. The old grammar school senior center. I've had at least one meeting with Julie on that, but other meetings. Yep. Um, the Leary lot in Hampshire lumber. Yeah. Um, Carolyn, you and I need to talk about this river pine nook, little meadow road grant, because mm -hmm. I'm not real familiar with it. Carolyn had asked if we had some extra money in the select board expense account for now yep. to get that started get because started. yeah. So I'm okay. still thinking about it. I just yep. need more information. Okay. And then we've got a lot of procurement tasks ahead of us. I've got some HR stuff and we've got some other commute committee and staff support, administrative support coordination. There's some planning that needs to go on here. Okay. I need people to know that if you're handing me things, it's going to impact that, which impacts everybody. Else. I, understand. I, I yep. went to a energy meeting. I know you want to get out of here, but it was the energy meeting with um, for, on geothermal last night. Uh, Lori Basada was there. It's the only one other person I recognize um, from our from town. But um, bottom line, really, really good. If you have a high water table, you can have an open or closed system here, and we can do a combination of you know the bore into the ground and the slinky one. So it sounded really, really good. What? A, but the bottom line, absolute bottom line, is you got to have a qualified consultant to do your calculations when you tie in all these oh, different buildings I'll with different uses. Number. So um, we just, uh, it's exciting to go forward, but we got to have somebody it's complicated for them. Yeah. Yep. I'll get you that number. Yeah. Anything else? Mm -hmm. One final thing. Um, right. 35 years in journalism, one thing that I found was very valuable is a deadline. And I'm wondering if we can't start assigning deadlines to some of these projects like the Leary lot. You know, the idea being, you got to set a priority. And if you don't set a priority, everything gets treated the same. And so, and then find you know, a way, find a way to say up, no opens to up. all the other stuff that gets done. It opens up, but we have yes. to be able to say no, because you've got two I people know. in there that are totally overwhelmed. I agree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I agree. I, I think we should still get together sometime. We have money still from that conference mm -hmm. and it's going to go away at the end of the year. And I still think we should just meet so we can talk about our priorities mm -hmm. and how we're going to get them Down done before that. Casey. Yep. I mean, she's yep. already looking like she's got a headache. <laughs> she's so. like, well, see, the thing is, if you set a deadline and you get something off your plate, there's always going to be something to replace it. But yes. at least, that's at least you've plate. accomplished something. Right. Exactly. exactly. Thank you, Tim. Well, that's uh, my deadline is a little past now. eight now. And so I know. I know. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I kept it close. I kept it. Yeah, thank you. I'll thank make a motion you. to adjourn. I will second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you all for joining us. Enjoy the weather out there. It's beautiful <laughs> spring.